Hey guys, Jack from On Wrist back with another video. In today's video, I want to talk about buying luxury Swiss quartz watches and really whether you should be making that decision. So let's get right into it. So the reason for making this video is because a couple months ago I was in the market for uh, you know a really nice watch. I was looking at Rolex, AP, uh, just a bunch of different brands, and I figured out the cheapest way to get into an Audemars Piguet was buying a quartz. And I saw that for you know three four thousand dollars you can buy a Royal Oak, thirty three millimeter Royal Oak, but it's quartz. And I was really really tempted by this deal. I mean you know this is a, a watch that for the price would definitely punch above its weight class i mean you're getting a royal oak ap you, you know it, it it doesn't really get much better than that and so i figured this is maybe something i should explore and after doing some research i found it really isn't the smartest decision to get something that is quartz from a really really uh, high luxury brand so i want to talk about that and discuss you know why that is probably not the greatest decision ever so the main thing that, you know, when it comes down to talking about these quartz watches from luxury brands is that you really don't have too many options when it stops working. On a normal watch, or, normal, or I should say a normal mechanical watch, if something were to go wrong in the sense that it stops working or it stops keeping accurate time or whatever the case is, maybe it doesn't, you know, the date doesn't flip over, whatever, whatever the case is, you can take it to a watchmaker and they're going to fix using different parts or to service it or whatever it is. And they're gonna end up making it, you know, work pretty much back to new condition. I mean, in pretty much every situation imaginable, you can get your your broken watch fixed if it's made out of mechanical parts. The problem is when you have a quartz watch and something goes wrong in most cases. Now there are some serviceable quartz watches, but in most cases you're out of luck. Um, you know, I think there is an example of the Seiko Tuna a quartz. I think that is a serviceable movement. But, you know, and there's very few examples of this, but in most cases, you just have to replace the whole movement. And so with this particular AP, Royal Oak Quartz, this is something that if it were to stop working, you're gonna have to send it to AP or a trusted watchmaker, you know, someone that's an authorized AP dealer, most likely. And they're gonna have to replace the whole movement, which because you're buying, you know, the service from AP or a certified dealer, you now probably have to pay 500, 1,000, 2,000 dollars, who knows how much money to replace the whole movement. So now not only is the watch not original anymore, which can lower the value and most likely will, not only that, but you have to pay, you know, a couple hundred to a couple thousand dollars to replace the movement just to get it in working condition. So compare that to a mechanical watch, there's really no issues that can't be fixed by a mechanical watch not working if you have the right watchmaker and someone who has access to the parts that you need. Now this same situation can take place for a cheaper quartz watch. I mean, if you have a G-Shock and you drop it and it randomly stops keeping accurate time or stops working, you're also gonna be out of luck. So yeah, this, the situation is the same, but as opposed to that $50 G-Shock not working, you know, your $1,000 your watch or multiple thousand dollar watch, you know, that's gonna be a huge difference in price. So if your G-Shock stops working, you can probably just buy another G-Shock and not really worry about it too much. I mean, another $50, $100. But if your AP stops working or your whatever, you know, stops working, you're, you're gonna be out of luck. You know, I, I found this out the hard way. Uh, the other day, I actually went to get my, uh, I have a vintage Movado that I was given uh, by a family member and it didn't keep, you know, it didn't work at all. So he put a, a battery in, it is quartz, and it, it, it worked, but it didn't keep accurate time. And so I was asking, you know, what, what can we do? Can you replace any parts? And no, the answer is you have to replace the entire movement or just have it not work properly. And so it cost me a, a decent amount of money to fix it. I mean, luckily for me, it was just a vintage Movado, but they had to replace the entire movement. And uh, I actually have a, a vintage Omega DeVille Quartz, which uh, I was given and I actually showed that off in my watch collection video that I'll link in the top right corner. But that's again, another watch that if it stops working for whatever reason, stops working properly, I'm out of luck. And there's not really anything I can do other than just replace the movement completely, send it to Omega. And that's probably gonna cost a couple hundred dollars because you know that is from a luxury Swiss watch company. And that's just something I, don't really love the idea of happening. So I don't really look for these watches online anymore. I don't look for these quartz watches 
that are vintage. Now, obviously, if you're buying a new quartz watch, you can probably rest assured that it's going to be working totally fine. But again, if this is something you're buying long term to give to a family member or to pass down, you know, especially if you're buying, a, let's say, a an Omega Aquaterra quartz or you know any of these higher end quartz pieces, yeah, today they're going to work fine. But the same issue still can arise in 30, 40 years if you know if you if you look that far into the future and you're concerned about that, which is something I do actually think about. I mean. I like the idea of having watches that are gonna be lasting a lifetime as opposed to watches that I'm gonna have to repeatedly fix for whatever random reason. Now, obviously you do have to service mechanical watches, but you know, you can go 10, 20 years sometimes without it, you know, keeping, you know, not as accurate time, but at least you're always just, you know, a service away from being perfect. Whereas, you know, who knows if you can even find that quartz movement for your random Omega or AP in, in you know 30 years from now so I just want to discuss this topic because it was something that interests me and it, it, you know I was really close to actually potentially buying a vintage quartz AP Royal Oak and I just thought uh, it was important to share this because it's some pretty uh, important things to think about when you're looking at potentially buying something in the luxury space that is quartz whether it is vintage or whether it's new I mean either way it's something to think about just for the long term and you know just something I thought was important to share. So if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and leave it a like. I would be uh, in much appreciation of that. And I urge you to check out my Instagram at Jack on Wrist. There is photos of all of my watches there. And so that's it. I appreciate you viewing this video and please subscribe. Thank you.